back to the touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro. Big Saturday here in the studio as we are talking about everything that has been happening during the whole week. Uh, one of the biggest tournaments happening at the Kasarani Stadium World Under 20 is currently going on there. They are currently on rest, but the afternoon session will be kicking off at 3 p.m. Right now, they are currently taking a rest at 3, the afternoon session of day 4 of that they will be coming your way. Let's come back and talk about everything, fan zone, and everything that has been happening. The football is back. The banter is back, and we have got to talk about it. And you better believe that fan zone here on the touchline is where you can enjoy it. We are still hanging out with Maxwell Wasik, and also joining me right now is Eric Aganya. Eric, how are you doing, my brother? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you. Uh -huh. I see Maxwell here. <laughs> now he's smiling. He was my smile. <laughs> now he was on my phone, so I had to smile. You know, for the camera, you yes. know. Uh, you see, when some of us, when some, when some of us smile, uh, uh, the audience get enticed. Uh, uh, so I go to. Blaze is on trumpet. Blaze is on trumpet. But a big week that everything that has been happening, football is back, and you've got to be happy about that. Yeah, yeah, we are happy. Mm. Uh, the weekends are, are interesting now. Yes. And. Uh, uh, we started off with the, with, with the Big Bang. Yes. Yeah. Before we go to everything that is happening in the English Premier League, big matches that are coming your way today, we'll be talking about also match day one on what everything that happened on match day one. But before we go there, let's also talk about what happened here at home. Just this week, Jakub Gosimle naming his Arambe star squad. I've got to get your thoughts on that one. Victor Mugubi Wanyama not in the squad. Some young guys coming in, but also two keepers from one team. is something that is on everybody's mind at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is putting you in the spotlight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, considering you are, you are uh, friendly with the Football Kenya Federation. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? This guy <laughs> wants my mic to be switched off. <laughs> <laughs> no way, no way. No, way, no, way. no but uh, on a serious yes. note, we are seeing some... Yes. I think what Jacob goes to Mule is now doing is stamping authority on his team. Yes. And uh, he's um, getting rid of um, the team that was Kimansi's. Mm -hmm. And he's bringing in new blood. Yes. Uh, he left out uh, not only Victor Mugubi, he left out also Joa Shonyango. Yes. Uh, who has been outstanding. Um, as you said, um, we have, um, his, the, the team is cutting across, eh? yeah. uh, both from uh, the international front and also the players who are playing locally. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two keepers from Karabangi Sharks. Yes. That is the talking point. Everybody's That's wondering. But I, I, I don't think people, uh, for me, uh, I brought it up as a joke, but yes, I don't yes, think yes. people should put a big talking point on that because it's still got to cut the team, I think, to 24 players. So it's giving these uh, young players a feel of what happens in a national team setup. Pa personally, I don't mind even uh, even yes. if uh, four players or the three keepers come from the same team, so long mm. as yeah. uh, they have what it takes. Yes. You see, the, the issue here is, do they cut the niche? Do they have what it takes? Yeah. Uh, they, are, they are there as a result of performance, mm -hmm. not as a result of influence from the boardroom. Yes. Uh, if they are there as a result of performance, then well and good. Uh, let them represent the country, because here you see, uh, we are representing our, our country, and we cannot afford to, to joke. But basically, what has happened in Kenyan football, uh, very many people, you talk to them on the streets, they don't want to hear anything to do with Kenyan football. I think we need to rebrand. Mm -hmm. our game uh, if we want to 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 attract fans back in the stadium if we want to attract uh, uh, sponsors we need to, to to remarket our game properly a big thing that is happening in kenyan football it's also in during the covid times and everything that has been happening but we are also coming to the end of the kenya premier league and maxwell yes. the whole season one thing that has been happening in the kenyan premier league what everybody was expecting Madara United to be relegated, but at the end of the day, still Madara United remains at the I'm very Premier. much excited because Slam Boys of Madara yeah. United 2008 <laughs> Kenya yeah. Premier League champions yeah. survived after beating Western Steamer, yeah. a team that was electrocuted. Yes. From Kenya <laughs> Premier League. You remember Laban Jobito, chairman of Western Steamer, he celebrated when yeah. you know other Kenya Premier League outfits yeah. were yes. uh, getting disciplinary, you know, uh -huh. measures from Football Kenya Federation over, you know, failure f to obey calf licensing requirements and other issues. But now, yeah. It was them who was getting eliminated from the league they have been playing in for the last few years and Madara United surviving. Good gesture, excitement, uh -huh. and you know, great to notice that the Slam Boys will continue playing in this top flight. Eric, it could have been 
bad or worse or it could be unthinkable to think of Madara United not being in the league next season. Uh, it's as, as, as Maxwell says, uh, mm -hmm. it's something that everybody is happy about. Yes. Uh, because if you look at uh, the Madara setup, eh, mm -hmm. uh, it took disadvantaged kids yes. and gave them future and mm -hmm. gave them hope. Yeah. And, 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 and that one uh, uh, needs to be done uh, uh, throughout the country yes. because uh, we have very many kids who are talented yes. and uh, it would be very disappointing if they had been relegated yeah. because that, that, that would be a loss for, for, for Kenyan football. Yeah. Because you, you see, uh, uh, despite uh, them winning, they also play very beautiful football. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful football. I was talking to my friend Sepe here, mm -hmm. telling me he's very happy. Because he's a product of Misa. Yes. Uh, and you've seen what Misa uh, has produced, uh, great talents. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's something that should, uh, should continue. Mm -hmm. so, 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 you know, yeah. uh, just like he said, Misa has immensely contributed to the growth of Kenyan football, development of soccer for this uh, amazing country. Yeah. It has, you know, cutters of Misa, we've seen players featuring in overseas leagues. Mm -hmm. Like Victor Mugubi Wanyama, I think he's the product of Maisa. Mm -hmm. Dennis Oliech, yes. the former auxiliary striker and national team forward. Yeah. And, you know, considering what they have done, despite the fact that, you know, right now as we speak, yeah. they are at loggerheads with the current regime of football, Kenya Federation, not reading from the same script. Mm -hmm. But what they have done for Kenyan football yeah. deserves them to continue playing in top okay. flight. Mm -hmm. Give or take <coughs> over 70% of players who have played in modern day Kenya Premier League have passed through the hands of Maisa and we cannot take that away from them. But we got also a credit Frank owner coming in at the later stages of the season. The team is at the bottom of the <coughs> log there. They have not won any match. Uh, they have won, I think, two matches under Salim Ali. But now, Ouna comes in, puts his magic to the boys, and they remain in the league. I was talking to one of them and uh, asking him uh, what really happened when Ouna came in. Yes. And uh, according to him, Ouna gave them a self-belief. Mm -hmm. Believe that we can do it. Yeah. And uh, no pressure, go to the stadium, go to the field, do your thing. Yeah. And when you do your thing, and the other person does his thing, mm -hmm. results will come. Yeah. And you saw what, what happened there after. That motivation to these boys. Mm -hmm. Because that is all you need. Winning uh, sometimes is just a, a, a thing of the mind. A, a mind, eh? yeah. And uh, losing is also lies in the mind. Because the talent is there. Yeah. Yeah. Talking of losing, one team is all, that also is leaving now the Kenya Premier League has got to be one team that has been a headache to FC Leopards, and that is Western Steamer. <laughs> Tough one for them. <laughs> Tough one for them getting electrocuted, <laughs> <laughs> considering how they have been electrocuting <laughs> yeah. their opponents. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know how comes there is a rivalry yeah. in football, though, yes. from people mm. uh, coming in western part of the country and mm -hmm. those from Nyanza. Yes. Because you know Western <coughs> Steamer initially they were sort of Kakamega based side. Uh -huh. But after switching allegiance to Kisumi. the lake, yes. so there has been sort mm -hmm. of excitement and rejoice coming from mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. locals yes. of Kakamega. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good for football anyway. It's also football the rivalry. Is happy Na now. Nothing <laughs> <beyond> <laughs> But it might be attributed <laughs> to the fact that, you know, yeah. they are supporters of FC Leopards uh -huh. and Western Steamer mm -hmm. has, beating, has been beating FC Leopards day in, day out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, remember yeah. under the tutelage of the late Henry Omino yes. when he was the coach, uh -huh. at no single time FC Leopards beat Western Steamer. So yeah. the team must be celebrating as well. Uh, and it's a, it's a challenge to the teams from Western, also Viga United. Uh, yes. Uh, it's also on the verge of facing uh, it's the It's on the verge of uh, facing the axe. Eh? Mm -hmm. And uh, you see, uh, when you look at football in this country, uh, truth be told, you find that uh, we have, apart from Nairobi, most of it is in Western Nyanza. Yes. That's why we, we, we have a lot of talent, a lot of people coming in, and uh, people have really invested in football. Mm. Uh, we need to go back to the drawing board. Yeah. Because uh, if this thing is going to continue, then it means we have a big problem in terms of management of football in Western province. Yeah. Because as we speak right now, the likes of Moroni, Sony, Sugar, Chemilil are not in top yeah, flight. They, they, they are not, not featuring flight. anymore yeah. Yeah. in Some Kenyan Premier League. Uh, Vig, uh, uh, Kisumu All Stars yeah. that are being been promoted last season yeah. got eliminated and yeah. relegated yeah. the same yeah. so it's it's yeah. really at all order just yeah, like yeah. you said for stakeholders yeah. need to 
So Viga even the, the, the Viga Queens lost their title to Tika Queens yes. because they are the one who had won it last time. Yeah. So we need to, to, to go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. and uh, reinvest, uh, <coughs> restructure football. A big one there in Kenya Premier League and everything that is happening. Tasca might be on the verge of also winning the league now, taking think, away from Gormai. I think uh, we can say they are the, the champions elect. Yes. <laughs> As they only need a point, uh, yeah. uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Robert Matano. Mm -hmm. uh, He's done wonderful. Yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he's, he's done well. Yeah. And uh, that tells you about consistency. He's been there for, for the last three or so years. Mm -hmm. He's been able to build a team and uh, we can be able to see now the results. Yeah. And you uh, know the reason as to why I'm happy it's because uh, football monotony in the breaks country that is coming to an end. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. my record Kenya Premier League champions have been winning this thing. It's like when they want it, they win it. Also. It will be fourth mm -hmm. time consecutively mm -hmm. them yeah. bagging the title. Now mm -hmm. Tasca mm -hmm. uh, winning their title for the 12th time since the inception of the mm -hmm. top flight. Yes. I think it's good for Kenyan football, at least now coming from the hands of, you know, a team that had monopolized but, local club football. But that that also brings in another angle, Maxwell. Uh, uh, Tasca winning uh, 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 brings in another angle. Uh, sponsorship in Kenyan football. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Tasca yes. have uh, guaranteed sponsorship. So the players are well remunerated. Their salaries don't, uh, don't delay. Yes. Uh, you find that uh, that should cut across all, all, all clubs. And uh, that should be a rallying call to, to, to some of the organizations in this country to yeah. come and pick up these teams and sponsor them. Yeah. Because you've seen Gormaya, FC Leopards, uh, they've had a challenge with funds. They've been doing a lot of fundraising. So the players will go for three, four months uh, having not been paid. Yeah. That, that, uh, definitely that affects the, the, the results. Yeah. So, but Tasca, KCB, you saw KCB also performed very well. There was a time they were on an unbeaten run. Yes. Because their players are well remunerated, their salaries come on time, yeah. uh, their families are taken care of. So all they need to do is to concentrate on playing. Yeah. So a challenge to, to, to organizations in this country. And you know, corporate sponsorship boils down to transparency and accountability. Exactly. That's why you know a lot of stakeholders in terms of you know corporate bodies, organizations, parastatals have been sort of reluctant and unwilling to come to the rescue of dying Kenyan sports yes. because they are not sure whether their money will be, will be taken utilized <laughs> properly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. know this game of musical chairs, you know, mm. stakeholders, federations, associations fighting yes. with entities. That's why, you know, when we were off air, we were discussing as to why uh, beloved President Uhuru Kenyatta likes attending uh, rally, rally competitions. And golf. And <laughs> golf. <laughs> you know, we can't say that he does that because the two sports are doing for the well, rich. Yeah, you know, that yeah. is a, mm. an assumption. Mm. We can maybe attribute it to, mm. you know, the sanity, the decency the that decency. is being mm. manifested in those in yeah, charge yeah, yeah, of yeah. those associations. Because, you know, the dominant sports in Kenya have been having problems of, you know, tag and war, mm. tussle, people competing, yeah. mismanagement yeah. Fighting, of funds, mismanagement, rankling. Mm -hmm. And to some extent, at some point, Uru Kenyatta attended a, a rugby match yes. at Ngong Road at RFU grounds. Back then, in the day, when Kenya was playing against England or New Zealand. In but 2012. Yeah, 2012. Yeah. Why? So a conversation <laughs> will be going to happen here, but when it comes to Kenya Premier League, people have that passion to talk about everything that has happened, but I can sum it up and say that we need goodwill as the current uh, African football head, uh, Patrice Motsepe, actually said we need goodwill from the corporates, from the government, for sports to succeed. The game between Liverpool and Burnley has actually kicked off. It's one minute into that game. Jordan Henderson is back into the lineup. Some of the matches that we'll be following here today, we've got Aston Villa versus Newcastle. Crystal Palace will be playing home to Brentford. And then at Elland Road, Leeds will be playing Everton after they lost to Manchester United by 5-1 on match day one. Man City will be playing home to Norwich. All teams lost on match day one. And then we'll be finishing off today with Brighton Half playing home to Watford. But before we come on to the matches that are being played today, let's talk, look about Liverpool Burnley today. Liverpool started on a high on the match day one and today they are playing Burnley. You expect them to win today? Mm, I expect them to win because... Uh, um I saw the lineup. Uh, Klopp has made some changes. Yeah. Uh, simply because you see the style of football that Klopp plays. Klopp plays heavy metal. Yeah. 
Yes. Heavy metal, uh, uh, these players that he has right now, his key players, cannot do, in, do it week in, week out. Yes. Sadio Mane is around 30, 20, 29, 28. Uh, the moment you're in your late 20s or early 30s, and that's where most of the Liverpool players are, uh, it becomes very difficult for you to play the heavy metal. So he has to make changes from time to time. And uh, I'm expecting a win for them today. Last time these two teams met, Maxwell Burnley actually managed to edge Liverpool. Burnley has actually won against Liverpool, I think, twice under Sean Dyke. And can today be that day? Our friend of mine always keeps saying that Ogopa will kick off. Because <laughs> <laughs> most, of the the times, most of the times, <laughs> yeah. the result is always in favour of the Minos. Those <laughs> that are not favourites for the, yeah. you know, uh, yes. match. So it's likely that Liverpool are taking home three maximum points but you know Burnley can do anything and considering what Jürgen Klopp said in his previous interview just before their first game of the yes. season saying that you know he was not interested in signings and for them it's not about financial muscles pushing them to sign uh, world-class players the way Man City, Man United and Chelsea are doing. It was sort of mind game you know mm -hmm. to some extent uh, tactics can be getting diminished. Mm -hmm. But you see, we don't write them off this season. It's a tough game, but I, I give an edge over Liverpool. That is, uh, that, that is the match that has actually kicked off, but we'll be following off some of the other matches and also we'll be talking about the big game of the weekend. Your Chelsea will be playing Arsenal, but that game will be coming your way tomorrow. But before that, we were also going to talk about the nominees for the UEFA Player of the Year and also the Coach of the Year, where we've got Kevin De Bruyne of Manchester City. Jorginho of Italy and Chelsea, and then Golo Kante of France and Chelsea. I think it is the first time in the UEFA Player of the Year we are not seeing a Cristiano Ronaldo and a Messi in that list. So, where do you think it will fall? Where, where will it land, Eric? Paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, me, personally, I'll give it to Golo Kante mm -hmm. uh, because uh, he's a very humble player mm -hmm. and uh, who has uh, really performed well this season Yes. Uh, with Chelsea. He has been... Uh, you realise before... Uh, Tuchel came in, yes. uh, Lampard was using him sparingly mm -hmm. and the results were poor. When Tuchel came in and uh, gave him the, that role of a spoiler in the midfield, yes. uh, that's when the results became better and uh, they went on to win the, the Champions League. Mm -hmm. So, Jorginho, Jorginho won the, 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 the Euros and uh, also won the Champions the League. Champions League. Uh, uh, De Bruyne, no, De Bruyne was, uh, was out injured yeah. for, for, for some time. Eh? Okay. And uh, apart from now, the, the, the Premier League alone, uh, there's no other bigger contribution that uh, he, he did. Look at what he did with Belgium. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll go for Ngolo Kante. D don't you think Jorginho will take this one? National team, you have the Euros, Champions League, you are with Chelsea. You never. You, I think he banged gold for Chelsea. He did uh, some good goals for Chelsea in their Premier League campaign and also in the Champions League. But the two trophies give him an upper hand against the Kante and De Bruyne. Goal has been immense. Yeah. He has, he's been instrumental for his side and France. Despite the elimination from Euros at an early stage with the national team, he's been, his contribution has been superb. And I think without Golo Kante, last season, Chelsea wouldn't have comfortably bagged the UEFA Champions League title. You saw yes. in the last two matches before even finally was the man of, of the, the match. match. In the yes. semi and in the quarters. And yeah. in the quarters. So which means mm -hmm. his contribution was necessary and was immense. Jorginho mm -hmm. has also tried, he has done very well, but I think comparing him to Nkolo Kante, Yes, he's, he's been uh, uh, superb. And bearing in mind that Jorginho and Golo Kante were in the same midfield yes. and, uh, and uh, yeah. in Chelsea team. Yeah. And at no given po uh, point did Jorginho win the man of the match when Golo Kante is there. Yeah. So that, that, that I think uh, should give Golo Kante an edge. But however, if they go for trophies won, then jo Jorginho has the national team yes. uh, yeah. with, with, with the, 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 the Italian team. They won the Euro. Well, the nominees for that one on the UEFA Player of the Year awards in the men category, Kevin De Bruyne, Belgium, and Manchester City. And then we have Jorginho of Italy and Chelsea, and then N'Golo Kante of uh, Chelsea and France, a big one for them. But also, we had also the manager's list also there. We've got Gudiola coming in for Manchester City, and then Roberto Mancini for Italy, and then Thomas Tuchel for Chelsea. It has got to be a tricky <laughs> one, that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's tricky, but uh, if uh, my personal opinion, I'll give yeah. to Mancini. 
Mancini. Uh, oh, bearing yeah. in mind, uh, look at what he did with the average players. Yes. And uh, there's one thing that we have to attribute to Mancini. Yes. He played all the players he took to the Euros. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yeah were able to participate. Yeah. And uh, before the Euros, everybody had written out Italy. Remember, Italy had been performing very poorly before he took over. Yeah. And uh, he came, rallied them, won. Uh, and not taking away anything from uh, Guardiola and Tuchel, mm -hmm. uh, but look at the immense budget that Guardiola and Tuchel had yes. for them to perform. Mm -hmm. uh, Mancini did not have that luxury. So me, I'll, I'll give it to Mancini. I, I'm with you in there. Roberto Mancini really performed well. He, he took Italy from being a mediocre team to a world champion. 34 matches unbeaten. Big one for Roberto Mancini. Tuchel coming midway to Chelsea and lifting the trophy seems to be like a... How, how can we call it? It's a lucky charm for Chelsea. They win major trophies when managers come halfway through them and then they go in and win. You know, the awards... Mm -hmm. uh, treasure club football so much so most of mm -hmm. uh, the time they go for you know those people involved in club football and like national team considering yes you know uh, what the national team stakeholders do like Roberto Mancini just like you both say the stands a chance is is the favorite actually mm -hmm. if I were the person in charge of these accolades I would mm -hmm. give it to him yeah but Considering what Tuchel did with Chelsea, leaving Paris and Germain midway, joining them, uh, they were struggling in EPL and even helping them to cement their place in UEFA Champions League final and finally yes. lifting it. Mm -hmm. I think he got to be the most likely person to be given. Well, big one there. Let's hope Thomas Tuchel or Roberto Mancini and Joseph Gudiola, one of them, is going to win that one. Those talking points are there, but let's give one on the transfers where Arsenal have actually managed to sign the Real Madrid midfielder Martin Odegaard now to Arsenal, finally. Good signing for Arsenal. The kid impressed last season. The kid impressed. Uh, it's a good signing uh, to Arsenal. He'll, he'll, he'll add value uh, to, to the team, but he'll not solve their problems. Uh, because if you look at uh, most of the problems uh, in the Arsenal team is lack of leadership. Yes. Not that there's lack of talent. There's lack of talent. They have mm -hmm. very exciting kids. Yeah. They have Smith Rowe, mm -hmm. very exciting kids. They have Bakayo Saka. Uh, they have this left back, Tini. Mm -hmm. And now Adodega there. Uh, that's a good combination. But yeah. what they lack is experience. They lack leadership. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good signing for them. And I, I don't know how, how, how Carlo Angelotti finally re released this kid. <laughs> I, I wasn't expecting that from real. Yes, but I have, I have a friend of mine. Mm -hmm. He's an Arsenal supporter and he loves the show. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a mainstay as far as supporting Arsenal Football Club is concerned. I don't know whether it's due to his age. He's called Silas Kinot. He's a digital, he's director general of Kenya Urban Roads Authority. Yes. And you know, I don't know why the young ones who support Arsenal keep joking so much about Arsenal. They don't have uh, complete fidelity for the team. Considering mm -hmm. what the team is going through right now, most of them you will get them j supporting United or Chelsea or Arsenal. But the age of our fathers who started supporting Arsenal a long time ago, they always stick to the team regardless of the predicament. So Aaron Ramsdale has left Bournemouth to join Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal, considering that they were initially uh, linked with a move for Onana yes. from Ajax, <laughs> failing to secure the services of Onana would have been of paramount services to them yeah. going for the little known Ramsdale. I don't know. It, <laughs> it, it is not only that, they have gone for Ben White, ben White yeah. young also, mm -hmm. and all the older guard also, I think 22 years old, very young. And someone was they, joking that they look like they don't have ambition. Someone was joking that Odegaard mm -hmm. should forget about playing UEFA Champions League football. Yeah, at the age of 22, yeah. he's After 22 leaving years. Real to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said, oh, no, 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 I said something on Facebook. Uh, he, has, he has retired from Champions League at 22. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, Arsenal are portraying a, 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 a case of ambitionless. Yes. Uh, and uh, when they should be bringing in established leadership mm -hmm. in the midfield yes. and in the defense, they've mm -hmm. lost Luis. They should bring in somebody who is going to stamp authority on that, on yes. that, on that defense. Mm -hmm. uh, they should bring in somebody who is going to, 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 to stamp authority on that midfield. Mm -hmm. The Vieira type, they don't have that. Yeah. They have a captain who doesn't talk. A boomerang doesn't talk. He'll not rally his players, his team to, 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 to win. Mm -hmm. Look at last season. How many games did Arsenal come from down to come and win? Mm -hmm. Very few. 
they need the Bruno Fernandes. Yeah. And then tomorrow they'll be playing Chelsea and they, with all likelihood there's a big chance that Romelu Lukaku will be making a debut for Chelsea. His second debut for Chelsea against Arsenal tomorrow. Sam Gitai watching and he's calling Arsenal clowns because <laughs> they let him in his leave. Oh my goodness. The disrespect for Arsenal. <laughs> Yeah. But 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 Arsenal yeah. have, have have something. They rise up against those big teams. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow everybody is 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 uh, is uh, expecting expecting a win. A, a win for Chelsea. Yeah. Uh, but we've seen uh, Ateta rising up on in some occasions. Yes. It it only depends on how the players will show up. Yeah. And uh, they can they can pull a surprise. Th there was a big. Uh, uh, I think last week uh, one of uh, Arsenal's. Uh, former great players Ian Wright came out saying that if Mikel Arteta had the United squad, he will win the league. Nah. Where do you rate Mikel Arteta nah. this season? Will he finish the season? I doubt. Mm. I doubt because you look at the opponents have strengthened. Eh? Yeah. Look at the opponents. United have strengthened. Mm. Um, Man City have strengthened. Chelsea have strengthened. Look at um, Tottenham. Tottenham, if they get if they keep hold of Varikane uh, with uh, Nuno as, a, as, a, as the coach, they will be able to do better. And uh, where will Arsenal uh, fit? Where will Arsenal fit? Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know whether you guys agree with me on some statement that, you know, yeah. what uh, Ian Wright said might be true. I think tactically, Arsenal coach is better than Oleguna Solskjaer. Then why doesn't he win matches? <laughs> but look at the squad. Look at the pool of players he has. United, you got world-class players in Pogba but the hair, but you're still squandering chances. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, Sosia is unsure. And the one thing that was giving him a problem was his timing of substitutions. Mm -hmm. You'll find that uh, towards the end, he started getting it right. Yes. His timing of substitutions was a problem because uh, you have a game that is not working. You're not sure. You don't want to make the big calls. And uh, you saw the final. The final, uh, the Europa final. Uh, before the final, uh, very many people were thinking United will win. Me being a United fan, I was very wary of Unai Emery. Yes. Because Unai Emery is experienced, he will make the big decisions. Olegana still is still afraid. He wants to, to, to wrap these players in cotton wool. He doesn't want to appear uh, he wronged Pogba. He doesn't want to appear he wronged Bruno, Bruno Fernandes. But there's a time this player, on that particular day, he has a bad day in office. Are you able to make those calls? Look at Sushel when he came in. He brought in a player. 20 minutes the player didn't perform, pulled him out. How many coaches will do that? And you guys are forgetting about talking about what the president of Rwanda said of Arsenal. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> that has gone oh, oh, global oh, oh. and yeah. I think gotten the attention of many Arsenal stakeholders, including the owners. You saw the Sky Sport, Sky Sport story that went viral. I, I think also for, I think many Africans were out there saying that uh, these are presidents supporting another team and all that, forgetting that uh, sports is about passion and emotion. Yeah. Yeah, it get the, way the spirit of sports, it gets to your head, the way it turns you, everybody is different. That's why get someone supporting Manchester, another one is supporting Arsenal. And President Kagame has been supporting Arsenal for a very long time. And he has used that support to get tourists coming to Rwanda. I think yeah. when you look at uh, their figures, they say that... Uh, since he wrote a visit Rwanda with the Arsenal and also with the Paris Saint Germain, mm. there are many people who have taken an interest to go and see what Rwanda is all about. That one, apart from that, as a president, as a human being, is a football fan. Yes, I think you have seen how he supports the Ka Sekafa mm. being called Kagame Cup and all that. He's a patron of APR, where he usually talks about even signing of the players. But at the moment. You can see where that frustration of Arsenal is now. Arsenal you can see the frustration now is really <laughs> up there. Because if you get a president complaining, what of now the normal? Yeah, yeah. Arsenal, Arsenal is disappointing because yeah. Arsenal is well loved, uh, well supported. Mm. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, they're not living up to the, the, the expectations. Mm. And uh, I am afraid this season they'll fall short again. Yeah. They'll <laughs> not make it to the Champions League. A goal there from Liverpool, Diogo Jota putting Liverpool yeah. ahead of Burnley and it is now Liverpool 1. I think Burnley. we're, ju we're yeah. just discussing about Jota <laughs> off air and yes. saying he's the only natural number 9 that they have. Eh? Yes. And uh, they put him there at the expense of Firmino mm -hmm. because of what he's capable of. He's 25 years old yes. and he's very little. Yeah. Uh, so he's going to be a, a massive player for them this season. But 
let, let's leave it for, for you. Chelsea, Arsenal, where, which score do you go for? I'll give it to Chelsea to one. Chelsea? Obviously, Chelsea. Well, big one there. I hope Arsenal <laughs> wins that one, but who knows? Look I'm also looking back. forward. I can, <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. it's you good to be realistic, it. but yes. what you will want to happen. One yeah. game also that will be coming at 3 p.m. today is a big game that has got to be Leeds United versus Everton. Leeds lost to Manchester 5 1 at Old Trafford. On last Saturday, they are playing at Ella Run today against Everton. Everton won. Big match for Leeds. Big match for Everton. A big match for for both for both coaches who have immense uh, experience because you have Benitez on one side, yeah. and uh, you have uh, Marcelo, Marcelo Bielsa. Bielsa on the other side. Yes. Uh, Marcelo Bielsa doesn't mind losing. Yeah. Uh, doesn't mind conceding. Because he plays open football. Yeah. Uh, on the other side, uh, Benitez plays direct football. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what I can say is that uh, it will be a game with goals. It, it is a game w which we are going to enjoy to watch. Yes, it will be a game with goals because it, it will be from one end to another. Attack, attack, yeah. attack, attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, for, for, for I think I'll give Leeds an edge because most of their key players like uh, Phillips, uh, had be, had come from the Euros, so he didn't start the Manchester United game. He may be able to start this game and he solidifies their midfield. Yeah. So him coming in, eh, uh, they may have a, 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 an upper hand. Everton, Rafa Benitez is back, started very well last weekend and today is in. And we were talking off the record that he might also disrupt the top, top, six, top or six, top seven of the English Premier. Even get on to the top four because he has been there and he knows how it's done. So. It's a big one for him also. Yes, a very experienced gaffer after taking over from an equally good tactician in Carlo Ancelotti. He's yes. looking forward to taking Everton to a, another level. But Marcelo Bielsa, you remember he extended a contract with Leeds yes. just two weeks before the kickoff of English Premier League. And considering he lost to United, that was mouthwatering loss, 5-1. And he will be looking forward to, you know, bounce back yeah. from the loss last weekend. So it's it's... A clash that everyone wants to look forward to, but I give Everton an edge over the opponents. One thing that has come to my mind at the moment, it is that it was a baptism by fire for Crystal Palace manager Patrick Vieira last weekend. I think he considered 3-0 yeah. last weekend, and now today he's playing against Brentford, which won match they won against Arsenal 2-0, and they are playing this afternoon at the Crystal Palace. Patrick Vieira Will he manage from the way you saw Crystal Palace play last weekend? <laughs> <laughs> they saw they him go and sit down the way Wenger the, used to sit. The fans were disappointed that he was uh, he was chosen as the, as the coach, eh? mm -hmm. uh, because uh, following his uh, his record, he didn't do much uh, yes. in the US where he was, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, bearing in mind that that was a simpler league yeah. as compared to the Premier League. So as you say, baptism of fire, mm -hmm. he, that baptism of fire will continue. Very much. They will continue. And you see, remember, Crystal Palace have had the knack of escaping relegation. Yes. 12, 13, 14, that is where they finish. Starting off like this might not end well for Crystal Palace. And bearing in mind they had an experience, uh, one of the oldest coaches, Roy, Roy, Hudson. Yeah. Roy Hudson. Eh? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He, he's in trouble. I don't want to say that I, I want him to lose the job or something, but I've also said about uh, Mikel Arteta not finishing the season, and uh, not me alone now, let me put it out there, outside there. Even the odds are there already with the like of uh, established sites like the BBC and all that. Patrick Vieira might not finish the season also. Obviously, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, <laughs> we are saying it's final <laughs> too. <laughs> if I were a former footballer, yeah. Yeah. and during my time I played best football, I would never try, attempt <laughs> to become <laughs> a coach. Because yeah. most of those who've done that have yes. failed miserably. Okay. Gary Neville, Ask Gary at Villarreal, <laughs> you know, at Thierry Henry yeah. at Montreal yeah. Impact, yeah. assistant coach too. To Belgium. Roberto Martinez at Belgium, Belgium national yeah, team, yeah. now Patrick Vieira at <laughs> Crystal Palace, considering yes. the rebellion that is currently underway uh -huh. in the squad yes. of Crystal Palace. Wilfred Zaha seems stubborn. Mm -hmm. He is not settled at the club he wants to leave, yes. uh, being linked with several clubs like Paris and Germain. So, it's obviously... Patrick Vieira won't manage to cruise <laughs> unless something happens. Let, let's hope that that one will not come again his way. But also, Manchester City will be playing this afternoon uh, against Norwich. Both teams lost match day one. This might be the first win of uh, Pep Guardiola.
He can't afford to lose another one because the moment he loses, uh, you don't start the league by uh, being f six points off. Because yes. you see, uh, uh, the other competitors, the other, the, the other teams you're competing against, when they push that gap, mm -hmm. uh, psychologically it becomes very difficult for you to catch up. Yeah. So I, I think uh, he tinkered with his team as usual last time. Yes. I'm expecting him to tinker again today, but uh, I'm expecting a win for them. Well, big one there for them. Let's so see how that match will be. Let's talk about tomorrow's matches quickly. Time is not on our side, but let's go ahead and talk of the matches tomorrow because it will be a big day. Early kick of Southampton at the St. Mary's will be playing home to Manchester United. Then, Nuno Espirito, the Tottenham coach, will be going back to his home, the Wolves. will be playing Wolves away and then Arsenal will be finishing off the day against Chelsea. Let's start with Southampton, Manchester United. Second win for Manchester. And De De Gunner. Definitely, definitely. Second win for Manchester. <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely because... Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, a, he's, a, he's an undercover Manchester United fan. Eh? So... <laughs> <laughs> so yes. uh, definitely uh, a win for Manchester United because mm -hmm. if you look at the Manchester United squad, it has depth. Yes, it has depth. Remember, you, you saw Jordan Sancho. You saw them winning, f scoring five without Cavani, without Rashford, without yes. Sancho coming in from the bench, without the new signing Varane. Mm -hmm. So we, we 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 have what it takes. Yes, and uh, I think uh, we'll demolish Southampton. The nine, we scored nine. Nine one. Nine it, one. it was, I think, nine one. <laughs> uh, you, they, they scored nine one last season against Southampton. I think you had also another result of six two against, against Leeds, Leeds last season. Also, the five. so high scoring Manchester United. They have started on a very high gear with the fans and everything. That spirit can take them all the way. Yeah, they have to maintain the momentum. Again, Southampton, considering Southampton has lost one of their best players, a striker, to Aston Villa. Yes. And they look depleted uh, up front and United might capitalize on that to, you know, continue banging yes. goals so that they record maximum points to cement their chances of English Premier League this season. So I give Man United an edge over, you know, Southampton. And Verano might make a debut. For Manchester United. Yeah, he, um, might, he might make a debut. Sancho also. Sa Sancho may make a start. Yeah. Because I saw him, he played in the in the, in the friendly against, uh, I think it was Burnley midweek. Yeah. And um, the most interesting thing about Manchester United is that the goals are coming from the midfield. Yes. Uh, the strikers have not yet started firing the cylinders. And credit to this kid, Greenwood, at the age of 19, he scored a lot of goals. Yes. And uh, if he continues, uh, uh, that is one attribute that uh, Olegana has to be attributed with. The management of these kids mm -hmm. uh, he's done a good job. Uh, we were just speaking over here with Maxwell here and uh, saying uh, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a hard thing to take that uh, Verane will come to bench Lindelof. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, Lindelof has put in uh, uh, good, good, good performances throughout. Don't you think that with the coming in of Verane, with the form and how Lindelof has played for Manchester United so far, because I think Lindelof came and he has performed well, he has won trophies with Manchester United so far, and he's a very good centre-back, that United now might be pushing into a centre of three, three a back, back three, three of maybe. central oh. defenders, with Guan Bissaka going further upwards and Luke Shaw going further upwards on the left side. You know, first of all, I have to laugh at your question. You know, Man United fans like magnifying things at Lindelof <laughs> as one trophies with Manchester United. Come Which trophies? Yeah, you know, you know in the past, with, 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 with the Europa League and uh, with Mourinho. Yes. This guy. Among this guy the guy is talking about no EPL, no Champions League. We are winning it this season. It's pedestrian this guy, trophies. Like, this guy, look at him. That's anyway, why I anyway you. you know, uh, Rafael Varane joining <laughs> He's not, <laughs> he's not a world-class <laughs> defender. You know, he's not the caliber of, of, of Nemanja Vidic, Sergio Ramos. We don't have those ones. Thiago anymore. Silva. We don't have them anymore. He's, he's, but but, he but four but, trophies, four Champions League trophies with Real Madrid. It, it was only like, I think, five La Liga titles with Real Madrid. Definitely. And he won the World Cup with France. And then you call him mediocre. Oh, no, he's not <laughs> mediocre. He's above average defender. And he yeah. will bring a lot of competition. At, yes. uh, at Man United. Obviously, mm -hmm. he's the best centre-back the team has right now mm -hmm. uh, with uh, Maguire and Lindelof behind him. Yes. And uh, your choice to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer of playing back three, mm -hmm. if it can work for the team, the better. But obviously, it will tighten the defence, it will bring a lot of competitions. Everyone will want to play to his fullest and I think 
it will add you know spice to the team so you might find that even a coach is opting for benching Maguire because of the stiff competition behind so yeah. It's good for the team. You asked about Wolves, Tottenham, good yeah. match. Big good game. match. Mm -hmm. Big game. Wolverhampton Wanderers are a team known for signing the Portuguese internationals. I don't know whether, now that uh, Nuna has <laughs> left, whether they will continue with the same <laughs> trend. But yes. it will be a big game. Mari Ken is likely to be making a return to the squad, yeah. playing up front, you know. So it, uh, that one is still... In the works, we don't know how Daniel Levy is going to do that one. And we might say Hurricane not starting again, considering the transfer deadline is on 31st. I like what Nuno is doing. Nuno has taken uh, something that very many coaches will not do, benching Hurricane especially in the first game against Man City. You'll find that a coach, who, yeah, a coach who panics will try to rush him. Yes. But he's, 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 he, he shows me uh, he, has, he believes in himself and uh, he's, going, he's ready to use the players that are available. Even if Hurricane leaves, yes. uh, he's going to use the players at his disposal. And so he, he came into that game, benched Hurricane, and the team performed. Yes. And you see, uh, the, I think the players, uh, the, 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 the Tottenham players have braced themselves for Hurricane's exit. Yes. And I was reading somewhere they have even given uh, him uh, 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 their blessings yeah. to go. So they, they're already looking at moving forward. And what Daniel Levy is doing, Daniel Levy is holding on to a cash investment and not a uh, player plus money. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Man City has suggested that they, they have two players uh, going the other side, Gabriel Jesus, mm -hmm. and two other players, I think, Sterling. They want to dispose of Sterling to mm -hmm. go the other side, plus 70, 70, 70 million. But Harike, uh, Nani says, uh, Daniel Davis says, bring 125 cash. Wow, the big one there. Let's see how that one is going to be. But Nuno has also started making, it, it's a good start for him at Tottenham, going against the champion yeah. and making sure that the champion does not start on the front foot. Yeah. He, 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 he started well. That is a dream start for any, for any coach whatsoever. Yes. Because you're going against Man City the first game and you win. And you yeah. don't concede. Mm -hmm. uh, against Man City you don't concede. Not only winning but not conceding is also yeah. a big factor. Mm -hmm. That uh, your midfield and your defense is well tightened. Yes. And, and that is a very big plus for him. Well, those are the big matches that will be coming your way on the English Premier League. Arsenal, Chelsea will be tomorrow. Also, Wolves, Tottenham tomorrow. And then Southampton, Manchester United. All those matches will be tomorrow. Currently, Liverpool is leading Burnley, courtesy of Diogo Jota, in the 18th minute. 30 minutes gone into that game. And it is now 1-0 against Liverpool. Some of the matches that will be coming this afternoon and the gold rush will be having Aston Villa versus Newcastle. Crystal Palace will be playing Brentford and then Leeds will be playing Everton. Man City will be playing home to Norwich and then at 7.30 we'll be having Brighton and then Watford. But before we finish off this segment in the few minutes that I have, I've got to talk about Messi. Didn't start yesterday when PSG was playing Brent but that squad has got to scare you. Either on paper or on the field? It's scary. <laughs> it's scary. <laughs> because uh, uh, if you look at... Uh, yeah. uh, we have Mbappe, yeah. we have Messi, uh -huh. uh, we have Di Maria, uh -huh. we have Ramos in the same team. Yes. Uh, Kimpembe. Uh, Kimpembe in the same team. <laughs> we have this little magician from Italy. Verratti. Uh, Marco Verratti in the yes. midfield. Uh -huh. uh, man. <laughs> and then you have Donnarumma in the in the in the goal. Yes. Uh, it's a it's a it's a scary squad. But what I wonder is the biggest problem will be for Pochettino is how to manage those egos. Yes. Oh, we have Neymar. Neymar. We have two bad boys, Neymar and Di Maria, are the problematic ones. Yes. How will he manage these egos in the dressing room? Mm -hmm. Remember, we had a case uh, last, I think last season, last season, but one where there was a tussle between Cavani and Neymar, who takes the penalties. Yes. Messi has now come in. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a, one of the main reasons why they, 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 they signed uh, Sergio Ramos. Yes. Sergio Ramos may assist if uh, he will be on the side of the coach. He will assist the coach yeah. to calm down these mm -hmm. people. Because he's very vocal in the dressing room. He's, he's done it all. So he's nobody. A winner. He's a winner. He's yeah. won everything that you can win. Yeah. Uh, and he's a warrior. On the, on, the, on the field. He's a warrior. Yes. He leads by example. So he may be able to, to, to assist uh, these guys uh, to calm down their egos. 
And uh, somebody was saying on, on Facebook that uh, football is funny, just like politics. Yeah. You never imagine Sergio Ramos and Messi sharing a dressing room. <laughs> but now they are brothers. <laughs> they're, they're, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know who will be taking penalties between the two. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but it's a, it's a good score. Max, give us your last word. Yes, the attacking department is intimidating. The trio of Messi, Mbappe and Neymar is very scary. And any team they are playing against, the defenders will be, you know, yeah. worried of them but still i don't give them an edge i don't rate them as far as european football is concerned you might find that you know they even don't win uefa champions league yeah. title they have good squad but don't you think pochettino is is is, is of caliber of managing that squad that mm -hmm. that is the problem yeah. That is where we finish off the touchline here on Y254. I've been your host, Robert Osoro. Maxwell Wasika has been here with us and Eric Aganya. The technical crew will say, Asante Sana, good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast here on Y254.